Marseille in the south of France was the host city to the final stop on the Bullet GC32 racing tour for 2015. Over the last five months, the crews on board these flying machines have been battling it out at events across Europe, building up to the grand finale here in Marseille, where the inaugural winner of this spectacular tour will be crowned. The boats have come a complete circle. Back in April, the teams gathered in the city for pre-season testing. For many of the sailors, it was their first opportunity to sail on one of these foiling, flying catamarans. For others, it was a chance to hone their skills ahead of the season proper and demonstrate to the sailing world these exciting new boats. I think the GC32 on the foiling boat, it's a revolution. It's a beautifully designed boat. I've sailed a lot of foiling boats now and um, it's super balanced. It's very, very easy to drive. The new generation of boats have to foil for sure. Since April, the teams and boats have seen a lot of action. Four tour events in every corner of the continent. And now they're back at where it all started, with five teams in contention for the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour overall title. It's fantastic to be back uh, on the GC32, and uh, especially here in Marseille. Uh, since the last event was primarily light winds, um, I think we'll have the opposite here. So good forecast, plenty of breeze, and should be plenty of action. The 2015 tour got underway in Austria on Lake Traunsee, where the light, shifty conditions made for a tricky opening event. From there, the crews experienced very different challenges at the second event in Cowes on the Isle of Wight. There was some wet and wild sailing off the British coast before the tour moved to Kiel in North Germany. A new venue and a new test for the crews. This time, it was the small city centre race course which kept the tacticians on their toes. Finally, the penultimate stop saw the crews enjoy the wide open sea off the Italian coast in Civita Vecchia. So after four very different events, we have a wide open leaderboard. The only boat to have won two events this season is Sultanate of Oman, so they have a narrow three-point lead at the top of the table. Ernst Bertorelli's Alinghi team took the Kiel Cup, whilst Armin Strom were victorious in Cowes. Sultanate of Oman may have the advantage heading into this final event, but a last-minute crew change could threaten their overall dominance. The British skipper Lee McMillan and his crew aren't sailing in Marseille. Instead, there's a new look to the boat with Australia's 49er Olympic champion Nathan Outridge. It's um, obviously a lot of pressure on myself and, and the boys on board to, to do well here. You know, Lee's done a great job with the team all year long um, and he's leading the event. Um, you know, we were very lucky to get a call from Lee saying, can you fill in for us because he had other commitments and uh, we're excited to be here. We've only done two days of training, one in very light winds, one in quite a bit of breeze yesterday. Um, and so far things are going well. Outridge and his crew may be new to the GC32 racing tour, but they're sailors with plenty of experience. On board is not only world and Olympic gold medalist Outridge and his partner Ian Jensen, but also Britain's two-time Olympic champion Ian Percy. All of them sail together as part of the Artemis America's Cup team. Uh, Oman uh, was really impressive today because it's a new team, but it's a team from America's Gas Cup, so he knows this type of boat. Huh? They sailed uh, this type of boat since five years ago, so they are really impressive. So for us, it's really interesting to have this, this team uh, in the circuit because we, we will learn a lot. GC32s are effectively scaled down versions of the America's Cup boats, and much of the technology is the same. The GC32s also use an identical course format with reaching starts and fast downwind legs, 
It makes for some exciting, spectator-friendly racing. Uh, reaching starts is a is a new form of racing that was introduced by the America's Cup um, in San Francisco, and it's yeah very different to the traditional upwind start. It puts a lot of priority on your time distance, the need to hit the line at full speed and as close as possible because it's very, very hard to pass someone on a reach, as, as any sailor will know. So it's a very different skill. It puts obviously less priority on upwind speed, more on starting and manoeuvres. Um, but I think generally the move was done for the spectators. It's exciting to watch and the spectators see right at the beginning the boats at their very fastest. Speed is very much the trend in sailing nowadays, with the boats getting faster and faster in a bid to make the sport more exciting. Trying to attract a new audience to sailing new race formats and venues are sought after. The Bullet GC32 Racing Tour is at the forefront of this shift and has been a huge success in its opening year, which the tour organisers hope to build on. Well, for 2016, we're looking forward to uh, a really nice tour, mostly in Europe. We uh, selected uh, a nice choice of uh, sailing venues where the venue itself, the sailing conditions, is the most important and uh, it gives us a really good uh, quality for sailing and for our teams uh, to participate. We started with five teams this year, 2015, and which are regularly participated. We had other teams that came in for one, two times. And looking forward to have the same teams for the next three years, plus new teams that want to sell with the existing teams now, like all Indian Spin Waves, on the Storm. This is going to be a nice, attractive um, series. And um, I'm looking forward to racing. Swiss Olympic sailor Flavio Marazzi has been in the GC32 class from its inception and throughout its development. The tour class president has seen the speeds achieved by the boats get faster and faster. The current record of 39.21 knots was set by Alinghi on Lake Geneva in May. It's a record that's sure to be broken soon with the crews waiting for the ideal sea and wind conditions. I think if it's windy enough, the boats will easily do 40 knots. We had a few moments yesterday of high 30s and we were still just learning the boat and trying to get the balance. But, um, you know, for such a small boat, 32 foot long, they go incredibly fast. and. Uh, no, that's, that's what happens when you start foiling, the boats just go so quick, so we're hoping to try and, you know, beat the 40 knot record today. Hopefully it gets windy enough for that. Two crews hoping for strong wind conditions will be Team NG and Armin Strom sailing team. The former has a wealth of experience in offshore racing, whilst Marazzi and his crew on Armin Strom relished the challenging strong winds in Cowes in June they outperformed the rest of the fleet in the big seas of the Solent to take victory. It's good to see the boats going fast and yeah, it's probably it needs to have a, a different board to go even faster, but as we've seen in Geneva, um, we can do almost 40 knots. We'll see what, what the result is on the speed test. Whilst some have the speed record in their minds, for others, the only thing that matters is posting a good result at this final tour event. A podium place is the goal for most of the teams, and for those at the top of the leaderboard, they'll be trying to defend their positions and fend off the challenges from the teams below. With the leaderboard so open heading into this final event, the fight for the overall title could go right down to the wire. Stay with us. Coming up, we'll head out onto the water as racing gets underway in Marseille.
Will Salt and Native Oman, with their new crew, manage to hold on to their narrow lead? Or will their lack of GC32 racing experience cost them the tour? We'll find out after the break. Welcome back to Marseille for the final stop on the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour for 2015. After four events this summer throughout Europe, the fight for victory in this new tour has come right down to the final leg, with Sultanate of Oman holding a narrow lead over Alinghi. The GC32s are racing in France as part of the Marseille One Design event, an international regatta where the intention is for them to participate alongside other foining classes, such as the single-handed Moth. We are very pleased to welcome uh, again uh, the GC32 uh, class. Uh, we, mem we remember last year it was really a great, fantastic event. Uh, and now the class is stronger this year. So the event is dedicated to one design boats. But this year we especially uh, focus on GC with two events in the same year, a uh, test event in April and a uh, Marseille One Design in September. So we like the GC and the class and we hope to have more boats next year. Marseille One Design is backed by the city in the build-up to it being the European capital of sports in 2017. France's second biggest city is a busy commercial port, but also has a wealth of experience in hosting major yacht racing events. America's Cup Acts, ISAF World Championships and the World Match Racing Tour have all visited the city, which is also a base for the French Olympic sailing team. The role of the French Sailing Federation is to encourage interest in sailing and also innovation in the sport. We support sailing in all its forms and here we are at the heart of evolution and the heart of modern sailing for two reasons. First, because the modern boat with their new technologies are very interesting and exciting to watch as they are very fast and for the second, this form of sailing is good for the spectators as they can see the racing from the shore. Located between the city's famous Prado Beach and the offlying Friul Islands, it's a picturesque course with a backdrop including the opposing hilltop basilica Notre Dame de la Gare. The French Providence is famous for its strong winds and the choppy race course can be very demanding for the teams. With the gusts peaking at 20 knots, the five teams were prepared for some wet but fast sailing on the opening day of the event. The 2012 Olympic champion Nathan Outridge was quick to get to grips with starting the GC32s on his first day as replacement helmsman for Sultanate of Oman. He and his crew were quick out of the blocks, but it was Alinghi who was the fastest to cross the finish line first, Morgan Larson steering the Swiss boat to victory in four of the day's six races. At times, the boat touched over 30 knots on the fast downwind legs, the crews making the most of the shifty wind conditions. You know, Marseille, for sure, the east wind, um, you know, presents a shifty race course, and, and today it was. So there was a lot of opportunities, and you know, it put a premium on boat handling, so you could actually, you know, tack and jibe to, uh, to capitalize on the on the big shifts and the guys did an amazing job on board. Pushed hard all day and uh, yeah, we should be happy. 
So day one in Marseille ended with a lingi clear at the top of the leaderboard with those four victories. The Swiss boat sit second in the overall rankings and need to finish at least three places ahead of Sultanate of Oman if they're to steal the overall tour title from them at this concluding event. While Alinghi were the clear winners of the racing in the speed challenge, they were just eclipsed by the other Swiss boat, Armin Strom. Marazzi and his crew covered the 600-metre course in a time of 58 seconds. That's an average speed of 26.81 knots. They beat Alinghi by just one second to win the Catphone Speed Challenge. These, these boats are, are really high tech, and I think the sailors, you know, they love to race them in, in close, close, confined courses. But also, you know, they love to really show what they can do. And if you think this is a 32-footer, it's doing 40 knots. You know, the big sister in the America's Cup is only doing 45 knots. So, you know, to be so close to such a big boat is uh, is incredible. And I think the sailors, you know, want to show the full performance. And for the guests, you know, they think it's amazing to see these boats flying. But to see them flying, you know, at high speed like that, really being pushed, it's amazing. Day two saw lighter winds for the crews after yesterday's explosive opening day. Perhaps an opportunity for a different team to excel in these new conditions. A regatta with a variety of wind speeds gives all the teams an equal chance by not favouring the crews who thrive in certain environments. I think uh, all the condition is uh, is good for uh, for every team because uh, we have the same conditions and uh, with wind uh, we are happy uh, we we would like just to do the, the best uh, with the conditions and uh, we will see uh, the ranking after there was very little foiling to be seen out on the water today with the crews trying to eke out every last bit of speed from their boats in the light winds Alinghi kept up their winning habit with two bullets, but the top performing boat of the day belonged to Spindrift Racing, who won two races, but importantly didn't finish out of the top three in all five races. They ended day two leapfrogging Sultanate of Oman into second place behind Alinghi. It was completely different than yesterday. Less win, but uh, yeah, it's a good day for us. Really good start. Uh, Lee one start, and uh, we leading uh, since the beginning of the race, so it was a good race for us. And the maneuver as well was really good, and the tactic as well. So it's uh, it's a nice day for us. Yeah. So at the halfway stage, the event is hotting up. Day three could be crucial. Sultanate of Oman need to finish third or better in Marseille to lift the overall series title. Otherwise, Alinghi could steal their thunder. Uh, we had a tough day yesterday. We're very new to the boat, but it's only our second day. So we, we kind of took some time to get to grips with the class and the light. But it looks like another light wind day today. We've learned a lot more, so I think you should see uh, the talent of guys like Nathan and, and his crew and Jensen coming through. And they did enough out on the water to prove to their competitors that they have what it takes to lift the overall tour title with a win in the opening race of the day. Their main rivals and event leaders, Alinghi, had a tough day in the tricky, shifty wind conditions. Starts are usually vital, but not on a day like this when picking the best side of the race course became more important. Patches of wind had the fleet playing snakes and ladders until the last reach to the finish line. Three back-to-back -back wins for Spindrift Racing saw them effectively wipe out Alinghi's previously comfortable lead in the regatta. Now, with just one day to go, it was building up to be an exciting conclusion. Alinghi had the narrow lead over Spindrift Racing in second, 
while Sultanate of Amarna right behind them in third. Engie's great performance moved them into fourth place in front of Armin Strong. So entering the final day, just five points separated first from third. Sultanate of Oman are guaranteed of winning the overall title if they could just hold on to that third spot. Could anyone upset their party and who will be victorious in the Marseille one design? Uh, you know, for us, we have to think about it as we're, we're tied, three-way tie, and uh, you know, the, the margin's small. So we just have to go out and sail uh, aggressive and well. As the boats came out onto the race course, wind speeds were already in their high 20s and climbing. Racing was in doubt, and then a storm brought more wind and rain. The race committee had no choice but to abandon the day's racing and send the boats back to the safety of the port. Really windy, like uh, like now, 30 knots uh, gusts, 35 knots gusts, and uh, we we try to bear away the first time when we we go outside and we reach uh, top speed of 37.5 knots. So it was really fast today, and think it was the right decision to not racing today. So the results after day three stood, thanks to some strong performances earlier in the week. Alinghi took the regatta while Sultanate of Oman's third place was sufficient to make sure that they were crowned champions of the season, winning the inaugural Bullet GC32 Racing Tour for 2015. You know, we're very fortunate that Lee had a nice little lead on the overall series, so uh, we could step in and, and do the job, which was great. Um, you know, Oman Sal has been great to us all week long, making our life as easy as possible, so we really enjoyed the experience. We weren't necessarily happy with how we sailed ourselves, you know, finishing third's pretty disappointing, but um, we would have loved to have raced today. The sailors enjoyed the concluding award ceremony. Alinghi stood on the top of the podium for a second time this season. They beat Spindrift Racing with Sultanate of Amman in third, but they celebrated becoming the first team to win the overall trophy for the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour. So it's been a hugely successful opening year to the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour with so many memorable moments. The boats have wowed spectators across Europe with some spectacular racing with the boats fully foiling. Sailors have been impressed with the ease at which the GC32s can fly in a range of conditions, making them user-friendly racing boats. Professionals, amateurs and newcomers have all had the chance to experience the power of these magnificent speed machines. Don't miss our next episode when we wrap up the 2015 season. There'll be a chance to relive some of the very best bits from the five tour events, also behind-the-scenes footage from the teams and the exclusive thoughts from the sailors who've been part of the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour for 2015. We'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>